Hello and welcome to Stateline. I'm Ian Hinchke. More than 800 South Australians are wondering tonight whether a bungle over radiation treatment at the Royal Adelaide Hospital might mean their cancers reappear. Last month, the Health Department revealed that for two years, an incorrectly calibrated linear accelerator at the hospital was underdosing patients. Why that happened and why it took more than two years for the public to be notified are just two of the many questions that need to be answered. Simon Royal reports. Ashley Moore is in the middle of renovating his home. The home office is becoming a nursery, so he's out in the garage. How are you going with it, all right? Oh, well, it's a pain in the backside. The joys of home renos, though, are nothing compared to the turmoil of the past few years, when a lump on Ashley Moore's neck turned out to be cancer. It was an advanced cancer by the time it was found, unfortunately. And, um, yeah, it was a, a head and neck cancer. And that was found in early 2005. And then I went into uh, a fairly brutal uh, surgery and uh, 30 rounds of radiotherapy with chemotherapy. This is what Ashley Moore looked like after the surgery that removed his mastoid muscle, but before the radiation and chemotherapy to check the cancer's progress. He left his job to focus on getting well, and these days he's an advocate for cancer survivors and chairman of a new independent group, Cancer Voices SA. And in that role he's faced his latest challenge, with revelations that between 2004 and 2006, 720 cancer patients at the Royal Adelaide Hospital had been underdosed during radiation treatment because of a bungle over a machine's calibration. A former cancer patient at the Royal Adelaide Hospital has the demanded health department answers. Says more than to 700 why people were given inadequate cancer treatment at the Royal Adelaide Hospital cancer over a two-year period. To let them know period. they've received the, the wrong dose of radiation sure. therapy. For that to happen is pretty poor. And then there was an internal review done, I understand, and for an external review or a proper review, like it's being done now by Professor Delaney, for that to take another two years is not real good either. The health department says the hospital became aware of the problem and fixed it in 2006, but the department says it wasn't notified until last month and then the public a few days afterwards. Then this week the list of underdosed patients grew much longer by another 114 people, including Ashley Moore. I was contacted again by the CEO of the department uh, to inform me of the extra 114 that have been notified and that that may affect uh, uh, members of Cancer Voices SA. And uh, then uh, the CEO went on to tell me that uh, unfortunately I was one of those in that 114 who had been treated on that machine. And that was fairly devastating news to firstly find out that so many people had been um, underdosed initially, but then to find out afterwards that uh, I was actually one of those as well. Ashley Moore says people were still being notified this Wednesday afternoon. The machine at the heart of all this is a linear accelerator. Associate Professor David Ball works at Melbourne's Peter McCullum Cancer Centre. He's a radiation oncologist, which means he's a cancer specialist who uses radiation therapy to treat patients. A linear accelerator is a machine which generates uh, very high energy x-rays used for treating cancer. Uh, the normal x-ray machines used for taking pictures of the body uh, produce x-rays at thousands of volts. The linear accelerator produces x-rays at energies of millions of volts, so they're very powerful x-rays. And along with chemotherapy and surgery, it's one of the three keys to modern cancer treatment. David Ball says the dosage rate always varies because of differences in people's bodies, and individual specialists will also prescribe different doses for the same cancer. The problem at the RAH, according to the health department, is its machine was incorrectly set, delivering a 5% underdose to what was expected. What everyone wants to know is, will that make a difference to people's recovery? If the dose is um, a bit low, it may under-treat the cancer, but uh, I think it will be very difficult to detect 
a, an effect of a 5% reduction in dose. Uh, I often think to myself, uh, could I demonstrate in a, a, a trial where if we treated 100 patients with uh, uh, a particular dose and another 100 patients with uh, the same dose reduced by 5%, could I detect a difference? I think mostly uh, at that level it would be very hard to detect a reduction in the control of the cancer. In a group of more than 800 people, it is inevitable that some cancers will reappear. Peter Humphreys is a lawyer and well known for his work helping victims of sex abuse. He says he's been contacted by people worried about the underdosing and a possible reoccurrence of their cancer. He's advised that in that event, it's highly unlikely there'd be any redress through the courts. Clearly there was neglect. There was negligence, but uh, that in itself isn't enough. There needs to be, it needs to be shown that there is a direct consequence or connection between the neglect and uh, the subsequent injury. And that would mean proving that uh, any returned cancer was the result of that neglect rather than just the ordinary um, idiosyncratic re uh, response of cancer to, to uh, radiotherapy or in indeed any other form of treatment. It could be that cloud always in the back of their mind and, and always that slight doubt um, of whether, you know, if there was a you know, there could be a recurrence, and if there was a recurrence, was it due to that or was it due to something else? And uh, I've had several weeks of that myself, thinking perhaps this could affect my outcomes. Ashley Moore's radiologist has told him that with his type of cancer, if he was likely to have a relapse, it would have occurred by now. But the health department, it still has a lot of explaining to do as to how its lapse occurred. The consumers and patients and the public need to be reassured that what we're getting in South Australia is the best cancer treatment and care. And obviously for two years, from July 2004, that wasn't the case. Simon Raw reporting. Dr Tony Sherbon is the Chief Executive Officer of the Health Department.